Welcome to Quill Sword Blogcast. College stupid. You have to be very intelligent to accomplish some levels of stupidity. You have to be seriously idiotic to keep doing it. The only thing the Ivy League currently lacks is the goose stepping. In order to prove how not racist, or how allied, or whatever crazy thing they're calling it this week, these liberal, elitist, very, very white, card-carrying members of the DAR are riding on the oh-so-virtue-signaling Ivy League campuses in support of murderers and terrorists while condemning the victims. Don't forget that part. Evidently, being uh, the victims of literal massacre is not high enough on the victims of oppression scorecard. Here's a hint. Don't hire these lunatics. Ever. I'm literally looking for companies that don't hire Ivy Leaguers. Yeah, I know. It'll take a while, but gotta start somewhere. Might not be so long, given that most of the tech giants are downsizing pretty drastically. Turns out, growth isn't a great business model all by itself. Now, part of why I'm saying never hire from the Ivy League is because of their horrendous choice in political values. Terrorists? Seriously? But there is an even better reason for business owners, customers, and aspiring business people to avoid these overeducated, underintelligent crazies. They're worthless in the workplace. I need a video editor, pretty obviously, and a marketing expert. I do not need a gender studies DEI expert. Who does? Which set of skills have the Ivy League been overcharging these kids for? Hint. It's not video editing, marketing, or anything useful for making a living. Seriously, I can hire a kid straight out of junior college for a fraction of the price and get ten times the value. A kid with a little hustle to boot, and I'm going to be looking for money in the budget just to keep him. Compare that to a kid who just graduated from a vastly overpriced school that radicalized him, but never got around to basic life skills like not cussing out strangers because they're wearing a hat you don't like. Why would I risk the toilet paper budget on that idiot? What you're seeing in real time is the political equivalent of why rich kids seldom make anything of themselves, and usually destroy the fortune in a generation or two if they're lucky, a decade if not. Great-grandpa's grit, determination, and business savvy are not genetic. Nor can you teach running a business from the top down. My guess is that before the disastrous sale, the Budweiser kids spent time on the backside of those Clydesdales with a shovel and a bucket. Experience teaches some of the things that no college can. Oh, colleges are worthwhile for some things. Don't really want a brain surgeon or a structural engineer who only learn their trades from experience. I'm very much a both-and kind of girl. The problem with the Ivy League crazies isn't that they went to college. It's that formal education is all they actually know. They have very real little li- real-life experience to temper the Ivy Tower mentality of their infantile faculty. If Mickey D's was the only job outside of academia that you ever held, you are way behind the curve. Basically, a Monday morning quarterback who has never even seen a football game. You know the kind. Well, that's what the Ivy League passes off as professors nowadays. Oh, sure, other colleges follow suit, But with massive student bodies, it becomes much more difficult to brainwash the entire crew. They make plenty a plenty big mess, of course, but they don't end up closing down their entire campuses because the student crazies are rioting in support of terrorists. Looking at you, Columbia! This level of stupid can only be achieved with a college education. Don't make excuses for them. Of course there are agitators present. Those come with the protest territory these days. But NATO expansion didn't make Russia invade Ukraine, and agitators don't make college kids act like crazy fools. 
They decided to do that all by their little overprivileged lonesomes. At 18, they can vote and go to war. If we will let them use ballots and bullets, we can let them take responsibility for their bad actions. There will be plenty of moral outrage, rightly so, leveled at the Ivy League for fostering this evil level of anti-Semitism. But let's call the game correctly. Only an elite university could get so arrogant and self-righteous as to end up being the very monster that they claim to despise. Being so busy trying to keep your ignorant little brats in your social class and protecting the supposedly superior academic and social elites that you lose all connection with moral decency deserves nothing but the condemnation and derision it will receive. In the meantime, we need to solve the most immediate problem. What do we do with these losers? Toss them. Oh, relax. Humans are resilient. They'll be fine. They just won't be the leaders they thought they were entitled to be. And while I'm on it, no more funding at all for any institution that permits legacy admissions. If it doesn't admit based on merit, then it doesn't get public funding. Those guaranteed student loans only go to colleges with admissions based on merit. And let's add a graduation rate to the bonus. The rate your admissions graduate determines your eligibility for public funding. No more admitting kids that are hopelessly out of their depth and setting them up for failure with a side of useless and unforgiving debt. Back to the topic. Don't hire these losers. Any of them. If their last university was Ivy League and they don't have at least 10 years of real experience, pretending to run daddy's company does not count. 86 that resume and move on. You hire that fancy resume for artwork or the person for their work. There are plenty of small businesses that don't have overpaid Ivy Leaguers taking two-hour lunch breaks. Wherever possible, shift your business and your dollars to them. Big corporations are hard to avoid, but not impossible. From 2010 to 2015, I probably didn't shop at Walmart more than three times total. No, I'm not kidding. That Walmart had crappy service, and I finally got fed up with not being able to get help when I really needed it. Dollar General and Tractor Supply became my go-tos. If I hadn't been hired by Walmart, same one, much better manager. In 2015, I probably would never have gone back. If I can avoid Walmart, what can you avoid if you really wanted to? Maybe that Ivy League suit that only cares about maximizing profit and not about the people who do the real work and the customers that make his cushy job possible? Sure, we can't eat the whole elephant in one sitting. But what happens if everyone starts chewing? Want a bite?